Hey everybody, in this short video we're going to take a look at TrueNAS Scale. This is the first time I've installed it. Um, I've actually got it installed. We're going to go through the interface a little bit and configure the storage. I will come back around in another video and actually do an install video. But I wanted to jump into this and just run through some of the interface pieces first. So once you get logged in, we've got the dashboard here that comes up. And you can see the system information, memory and CPU, network, and then storage. And one thing I will say that I like about this right off the bat is that it gives you an easy way to jump into creating storage right from the dashboard page. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that first. So we want to give this a name. We're going to call it TN pool. We're going to create it with all the disks. And it's already selected RAID Z2 as the option we want. We're going to go ahead and say create. We're going to confirm and create pool. All right, so we have our pool created. And I'm just curious to take a look at this a little further. Uh, add Z volume, edit options, user quotas, create snapshot. Okay, so deduplication is off currently. Compression is LZ4. Edit options. CFS deduplication. So we can set that to on. This feature is memory intense and permanently affects. Okay. We are going to leave that off. Okay. Don't want to bog the system down. So let's go ahead and take a look at shares. Okay, so sharing Windows SMB shares. We can add. Call this WinShare. So we've got the path, the name, default share permissions. Call it a Windows SMB share and we'll save it. And then it automatically prompts us to enable the service. This, this is Polish. I, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. SMB service has been enabled. Okay. All right, so we'll just do it this way. 232, connect. And of course it blocks us from connecting with the root user. That's fine. That's actually a good thing. Let's go back. Let's uh, do credentials, local users, add myself. So it looks good. Come back to shares. Let's 
window share. Try advanced option. Host allow, host deny. Okay. It's all good. I just want to know how to add permissions for the users. Now, mind you, I've not looked at any documentation for this. I just Sometimes I like to sit down at these things more or less blind and try to figure it out uh, because, you know, the general user out there is not going to necessarily look at the documentation before doing something. So we looked at credentials, or we set up credentials, data protection, not going to apply here. Still feel like it should be under shares. It might be edit share access control list. Okay, so everyone gets full permission and is allowed. So if we jump back over here. Try this again. We are connected. Okay, so let's uh, go one step further and we will log into the only other Windows machine I've got left, which is a Windows 10 Optiplex. connected there as well we can just do all right so I'm definitely gonna to have to read up on the documentation a little bit on this but we have in fact got a user built and we've got a little bit of work done on this so Anyway, this is just a little bit of a run through. There's the data protection tab. Network. Got interfaces, static routes, global configuration, and open VPN. Credentials. So users, groups, directory services, backup credentials, certificates, and two-factor authentication which I'm curious to see uses this form of use this form set up two factor authentication then link the system to an authenticator app such as Google Authenticator blah 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 on a mobile device so virtualization We've got apps I'm sure we get a decent number of apps. So not not a bad not a bad uh, selection here. Never heard of Photo Prism. Okay, we'll play with that another day. Reporting. CPU usage. System load. We can look at memory. Look at ZFS. Uh, 
This is overall I'm I'm impressed. This is nicely polished. Uh connected to command cloud. No, let's look at info. Active Directory disabled, LDAP disabled. Task Manager is running a Kubernetes update. So this is our first look at TrueNAS scale version 22.02.1. And yeah, I believe their first release of this was in December, if I remember correctly. But, um, you know, it sometimes pays to wait a few months before jumping into something like this. So this has just been a, a brief look at uh, TrueNAS scale. I kind of want to do a little bit of a comparison between TrueNAS scale, Open Media Vault, and Zygma NAS. Um, with only Zygma NAS being based on BSD. Um, it's not completely an apples to apples comparison, but it should make for an interesting video looking at all three of them and you just seeing where the quirks exist in all of them. So I do find several things on this nice. Um, I really like the fact that they've got something big and obvious when you first get into the system for storage, uh, for creating a pool. And I think that's something that Open Media Vault could learn from. Uh, even if it's just a shortcut to take you to the page you need to be on. Anything that makes the overall experience better for the user is a good thing. So, on that note, let me know down in the comments what you think about TrueNAS Scale. Have you used it? Is it something you're interested in for a project? Are there certain pieces of the interface you would like to see as I move forward into additional videos covering this? Uh, I will be circling around to doing an install video and just show that process. But this has just been a first brief look at TrueNAS Scale and there's more to come. If you like the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, head down to the link in the description that it will take you to buy me a coffee. Everything that comes in does help the channel and keeps some new equipment coming in for potential reviews and for uh, strengthening the quality of the overall process. So on that note, thank you all once again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.